In the previous episode, Lu Sheng drank some forbidden Mountain Dew and began some experiments on his own body, only to find out there are actually rules in this world that forbid what he was trying to do. However, that didn't stop him from using the energy from it and make him even stronger. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Jidao Marshal Saint learned about the death of his fifth wife. Though he didn't show much emotion at first, everything changed when he discovered that Lian Su was already expecting a child. Just then, someone emerged from the void. As we continued where we left off, Lu Sheng returned to the capital, ready to catch up with his friends. At a bustling cafe, he sat across from Lin Zhe and Yang, the three of them chatting casually. Lin Zhe, visibly excited, urged Lu Sheng to describe what the caverns were like. Yang holding her cup also seemed eager to know as well. Lu Sheng smiled and began recounting most of what he's been through, the places he went, and the stuff he saw. Lin Zhe kept throwing out all sorts of strange and curious questions, and Lu Sheng patiently answered each one. Yang, on the other hand, stayed silent, quietly sipping her drink and listening intently to their conversation. Lu Sheng noticed how much had changed in the past six months. Lin Zhe got so much tanner, grew a couple more inches, and was much more muscular, proof that he had been working hard on his martial arts training. Yang hadn't changed much in appearance, but she seemed more mature now. Lin Zi, amazed, couldn't believe that humans could transform into beasts, and exclaimed how incredible Lu Sheng's experiences were. Yang, meanwhile, quietly thought to herself that Lu Sheng had definitely grown stronger. Time flew by, and before they knew it, their drinks were finished. They decided to grab a meal together. Lin Zi suggested a barbecue place he knew, and Yang naturally agreed. Just as they were about to leave, Lu Sheng suddenly frowned, a sense of unease washing over him. Noticing his expression, Lin Zhe and Yang grew worried and quickly asked him what was wrong. Lu Sheng didn't respond right away, which made them even more anxious. After a moment, he took a deep breath and apologized, saying there was something urgent he needed to take care of. He told them he couldn't join them this time, but promised to catch up with them again soon. Without waiting for their reaction, he turned and walked off. Lin Zhe let out a sigh, lamenting how hard it had become to share a meal with Lu Sheng. Reminiscing about the good old days when they used to eat together at the university cafeteria, Yang, on the other hand, stared blankly in the direction Lu Sheng had disappeared, quietly worrying about whether something serious had happened. The scene then shifted to our boy, who was sprinting through the busy streets, cold sweat dripping from his forehead. Before long, he reached the outskirts of the city, slowed his pace, and walked into a park. Despite the cheerful sight of families picnicking around him, he had no interest in paying attention. Instead, he found a bench under a large tree and sat down. Even now, the thirteen immortal cells continued to tremble violently, flashing in a way he had never experienced before. A sense of crisis like no other repeatedly surged through his mind, growing stronger by the moment. Why was this happening? Lu Sheng closed his eyes, filled with questions, and entered his dream realm. He sought out a quiet corner and instructed Ai Yi to pull up his personal info. As the information began to load, everything initially seemed normal, but soon he noticed something alarming. At first glance, his heart sank. His profile picture wasn't the usual elderly version of himself. Instead, it looked exactly as he is now. Even more shocking, he only lived for 20 years, realizing it was already January, which meant he would die sometime this month. He then delved further into the records and discovered something even more horrifying. The timeline had been altered and he was told that during the grand military competition, he was killed by Zhao Ji. There was an image displaying him lying in a pool of blood, and opposite him stood someone who didn't resemble the Zhao Ji he knew. Could it really be the Ji Dao Marshal Saint? Though Lu Sheng had considered this possibility, seeing it confirmed shocked him. But why? Zhao Ji was only a ninth-level Marshal Saint, far from invincible. Even if Lu Sheng couldn't defeat him at his current strength, outright getting killed seemed impossible especially with the military backing him up. Without solid evidence, Zhao Ji wouldn't dare make a move. So where had things gone wrong? The records offered no details, leaving Lu Sheng to wonder if Lian Su truly held such importance to Zhao Ji. If that were the case, why did Zhao Ji compromise the first time? His mind raced, trying to piece together the puzzle. After all, in the previous Dream Realm records, Lian Su's death hadn't led to any significant incidents. But why was the future so drastically different now? On the outside, he just sat there lost in thought. Time flew by, and it was already evening, 
and later into the next morning, Lu Sheng remained in the same position. Days turned into three, and by then, leaves had piled up on his body. A young couple, who had been picnicking nearby earlier in the week, quickly noticed him. The girl, slightly spooked, tells her husband that the person they seen a couple of days ago was still sitting there. Could he be dead? The husband decided to check it out. He gently shook Lu Sheng's shoulder, causing some leaves to fall, and confirmed that Lu Sheng was still breathing. But why had he stayed in the same spot for so long? The husband guessed that he might have been emotionally shocked. Maybe a bad breakup? The girl, meanwhile, caught a glimpse of Lu Sheng's face and realized how strikingly handsome he was. She found it hard to believe someone like him could suffer from heartbreak. Suddenly, Lu Sheng's eyes snapped open. The man, startled but curious, asked him why he had been sitting there for several days. Lu Sheng's voice was dry as he replied that he had been stuck on something, one he just couldn't figure out. Seeing that Lu Sheng was fine, the couple felt relieved. The man sat beside him with a grin and said, If he doesn't mind, why don't tell him what's going on? The girl stepped away, giving them some space. Lu Sheng stayed silent for a moment before saying there was something he planned meticulously, something he even took to the most authoritative experts to conduct repeated tests and all got the same result. He took a deep breath and followed up saying, and yet, in the end, the result still turned out differently. The young man lit a cigarette, assuming this wasn't about heartbreak, and commented with a chuckle saying, well, if it's an accident, then it's normal. Life's full of surprises. Lu Sheng shook his head and explained that he verified it with the best. The tests all said no surprises could happen. The man exhaled a puff of smoke, waggling a finger believing then that just meant his so-called experts weren't as reliable as he thought. Heck, maybe they're even frauds. Lu Sheng froze, the words striking him. The man, sensing he had Lu Sheng's attention, went on telling him that life is full of things that don't go as planned. Nine out of ten times, things will turn out differently. Dwelling on it won't help. If he fails, just start over. So he shouldn't make it so complicated for himself. After hearing this, Lu Sheng suddenly stood up, startling the man. He tells the man that he's right, and he's making it too complicated for himself. There's no such thing as a guaranteed outcome in this world. With that, he thanked the man and dashed off. The man, cigarette still dangling from his lips, watched Lu Sheng's sudden burst of energy and muttered, Oof, youngster's always full of energy. When Lu Sheng got home, Snowy called to tell him she couldn't make it this time. Lu Sheng said it was fine, but asked her to take good care of his family. After ending the call, Lu Sheng reflected on his mistake. Somewhere along the way, his thinking had gone astray. He realized he had been relying too much on strategy and calculations, trying to control everything with intellect instead of his old way of just brute force it. The dream realm's visions of the future had made him overly dependent forgetting one crucial truth, which is that the butterfly effect didn't just apply to others, it affected him as well. Perhaps being a little reckless wasn't a bad thing. He started to question whether the futures shown by the dream realm were even real. After all, while the past stayed the same and couldn't be changed, the future seemed to be constantly changing. That could only mean the dream realm's predictions were nothing more than calculated probabilities. The futures shown by the dream realm were all possibilities excluding its own inevitable destruction. Lu Sheng had always assumed the butterfly effect wouldn't ripple out to affect events 10,000 years into the future. But in truth, the dream realm could not calculate itself. After all, no matter how strong someone was, no one could lift themselves up. A god might create a world, but even a god cannot create another being as great as itself. From the moment Lu Sheng first encountered the dream realm's life records, he accepted them as a predetermined future. Over time, he used the knowledge from the Fire Seed Project and provided this world with numerous powerful formulas and supplements. Yet he also observed something strange. One such anomaly was a low-tier formula that, in the Dream Realm's timeline, had become a fifth-level supplement 10,000 years later, making it 1,000 times more effective. The improvement was attributed to the addition of many different herbs, with the Blue Yin Grass, Essence being one of them. Out of curiosity, Lu Sheng had asked Ai Yi to search for it, only to discover that it was theoretical, non-existent in the current world. But what did this mean? It meant that the formula's components were fictitious, imagined, and impossible to find on this world, or more accurately, on this planet. Lu Sheng realized he should have seen this earlier. Evidence has shown that implementing these supplements prematurely altered the future, extending timelines for centuries, and yet, 
The place he is standing on remains a ruin, and everything here is the same as the first time he stepped into the place. He had placed too much trust in the dream realm and failed to recognize that it was a future beyond saving. No matter what he did, the world where the dream realm is built on had already died. But if that were the case, why had the dream realm allowed him to gain the powers of these future martial artists? What message were they trying to pass on to him? What was even the true purpose of the dream realm? Was it merely a powerful storage device? A computer capable of vast simulations and calculations? And what of the so-called Fireseed Project? What was its ultimate goal? Perhaps Lu Sheng was nothing more than a fortunate seed, raised to believe he was the savior of the world, gradually inheriting the legacies of the strong and most powerful martial artists. Yet as he got stronger and turned back to look, he realized perhaps he was never the savior, nor could he save this world to begin with, finally getting some clarity. And perhaps by now, he didn't need to carry the crushing weight of playing as a savior anymore. But thinking about this didn't seem to bring him any joy. Facing away from Ai Yi, Lu Sheng muttered to himself, Can you tell me the truth about all this? Ai Yi lowered her gaze, then suddenly spoke, telling him that his permissions are insufficient, and he needs to increase his access level. Lu Sheng spun around, startled that Ai Yi had actually responded. For the first time, he seemed to reveal the first layer of the Dream Realm's secrets. Yet beneath that first layer, there seemed to be even more mysteries, and he would need to keep climbing through the ranks of the system to uncover the full truth. But at least this small revelation lifted a weight off his shoulders. The chains that had bound him felt looser, and for the first time in a long while, he felt much lighter and relaxed. With a smirk, Lu Sheng's confidence surged. Since our boy is destined to become the god of martial arts, how could a mere martial saint kill him? Ji Dao Marshal Saint Zhao Ji, the dude's gonna have his ass kicked in no time. A few days later, the grand military competition was about to begin. Fleets of warships glided through the ocean, accompanied by fighter jets roaring in formation. In the ocean, a young man could be seen surfing alongside the fleet. Towering walls of waves loomed over him, but to him, they only added to the thrill of the day. With a graceful flip, he landed back on the deck of a ship. Meanwhile, in the command center, Generals and marshals from every military district sat, listening to officers introduce this year's representatives. The surfer was none other than Li Yao, the pride of the southern military district. At the head of the room sat the five marshals. They were told Li Yao was ranked second on the general star rankings and had a combat power exceeding 25 stars according to the records. The southern marshal, beaming with pride, couldn't help but chuckle at the compliments being showered on his representative. Meanwhile, elsewhere, a tall and imposing man leaped from an armed helicopter, diving straight into the sea below. Just before hitting the water, he threw a powerful punch that detonated across the surface. Time to catch some fish! He roared with laughter. The resulting shockwave nearly capsized nearby ships as the ocean's surface caved in under his strength. Moments later, he burst out of the water and landed on deck, casually tossing a fish onto the ship, as if it were a trophy. This was Gao Tianzong the Northern Military District's representative, and another top-tier general star. Next came the Western Military District's representative, and she was the only female. She skimmed the surface of the water, her movements sharp as a blade slicing through waves. As the crowd erupted into cheers, she found the noise to be quite bothersome. Three of the five general stars had now arrived, and suddenly, a surge of immense power sent waves towering dozens of meters high. The sheer aura left the three representatives momentarily stunned. At the crest of the largest wave stood a man with long white hair, clad in a black trench coat. His presence exuded an unmatched aura of dominance as he strode atop the rolling water. This was Dong Po Tian, nicknamed the Emperor, and also the number one figure of the Central Military District. Standing atop the towering wave, Dong Po Tian gazed down at the crowd below. As he muttered to himself, this year's competition seemed much livelier than usual. His dramatic entrance sent the crowd into a frenzy, with people chanting his name at the top of their lungs. In the command room, even the seasoned officers couldn't hide their surprise, though his arrival was undeniably flamboyant. There was no question that Dong Po Tian possessed the qualifications and strength of a true top general. Rumors swirled that his combat power had surpassed 40 stars, placing him in an entirely different league from the other three representatives. As the room buzzed with discussions, the central marshal gave a modest smile and addressed his counterparts. 
saying everyone is flattering them. The Central Marshal then turned to the Eastern Marshal, saying the four districts' representatives had all arrived. But where is the Eastern District's representative? Hearing this, one of the men chuckled and replied, The Eastern representative perhaps had arrived long ago, just without the fanfare. Another burst into laughter, saying how he heard that the Eastern District's pride, the so-called blazing sun of the East, surely they'll see him today. The man chimed in, teasing, Perhaps he already appeared but deemed himself unworthy, and they simply overlooked him. The Eastern Marshal ignored their jabs. Turning to a subordinate, he asked in a low voice, Where is Lu Sheng? It turned out that Lu Sheng had arrived at the military headquarters days ago, but never left his room, reportedly in closed-door training. Because of that, no one disturbed him. Hearing this explanation, the Eastern Marshal nodded in understanding, saying, Just let him be. No need to interrupt. He paid no mind to the taunts of the others. News of Lu Sheng's feats, such as slaying the five demons of the Dark Demon Society, had already spread among the military's highest ranks. Compared to the so-called emperor, Lu Sheng's importance was on an entirely different level. While it would have been ideal for Lu Sheng to make a strong impression during the competition, becoming stronger is a bigger priority. Just then, a staff member's headset crackled to life. The woman startled, checked her tablet and showed a look of shock. She announced that Lu Sheng had arrived, but she didn't know how to explain it. It's better just to have everyone see it for themselves. The entire command room fell silent. The tension thickened as everyone turned their attention to the screen. Moments later, their eyes widened in shock. The first thing they saw was a bed, and yes, a floating bed slowly making its way towards them. Right in the middle was our boy, lounging in his pajamas, snoozing away without a care. He was sound asleep, and from the look of it, he seemed to be having the best nap of his life. 